th these are a few few slides that I just threw together of a uh, trip down into the Antarctic. Uh, I was a diesel mech for one of the bases. This is 1967, so all you youngsters will never, never know. So this is just a harbour in Port Stanley, which is the first jumping off point where all the, the, the crews and that from, from the British Antarctic Survey uh, get all the bits and pieces and all the gear issued and all that jazz. This is before the Falklands War, much before the Falklands War. That's Port Stanley as it is, the church, the cathedral, uh, all tin sheds basically. There was about 2,800 people lived there. Now there's about 4,000 because they've got a major airport, but that's, that's just a general view of Port Stanley. This is moving further south to uh, one of the Antarctic bases called Signy Island. Signy Island was just a scientific base where they did a marine research. The black building to the right is just where the original base was back in the early, nine, just after 1948-50, somewhere like that. And the fiberglass base of, uh, boxes, of course, the new base. King Edward Point on South Georgia. Now, south of Georgia uh, used to be a major whaling station. Most beautiful island in my mind, but you get four seasons in one. That's Ernest Shackleton's grave. Although Ernest Shackleton didn't die on South Georgia, he died in Montevideo. And the, the biggest problem is, is in the winter, that's covered with snow and all the elephant seals go roaming across and all the fencing gets knocked down and you're on your toes all the time to keep it pristine. We had to maintain the whaling station at Gritviken. We policed it because the Russians and the Japanese used to, fishing fleets used to come in and they used to go roaming round on a night and bloody scavenging and scribing and really? pinching. Yeah. That's one of the glaciers round um, uh, into Royal Bay that comes right down. And this is what you get all the way around South Georgia. It's such a beautiful place to see. So where are we now? We're down in Halley Bay now. It's not called Halley Bay anymore, it's just called Halley. When that ship came in yep. every year, what yep. was the thing you were most looking forward to? Eggs. Eggs, fresh eggs. Everything else was tinned or dehydrated. This is the base that when I went in, they were rebuilding the base. So what are they doing here? Putting up the new huts to live in. No windows, no nothing, just huts. This is the old 1962 hut. If it was Saturday night and, beer and you, you got your bottle of beer, um, you used to bring them out and put them on top of the fire because then they'd thaw out. Because if you opened them, they'd just freeze solid, the pressure, and they'd just turn to ice. So straight we, away? Straight away, yeah. Oh, that's your shower. <laughs> so would you have that whole bucket to yourself? Or would that, you was your bucket. That, that was your that bucket. Was, that was your bucket. Right. This is part of the, this is the transport that um, these are called muskegs, used in the Canadian muskeg swamp um, where all the timber and that they used to drag out. That's the little vehicle. That's the small vehicle there, yeah. These are international harvester tractors, um, bulldozers. These are nine and a half tonne, biggest ones we'd had. And we took them across what's called the hinge zone. You could see all the crevasses out the back you see all them lines yeah. running in circles or semicircles? They're, full, they're crevasses. They're up to 300 metres deep. While you were there, did, did you lose many people? No, could... we lost nobody while we... Oh, no, we, we, we didn't lose anybody. We were lucky, though. Uh, we had, the doctor broke his back and Jim Shirtcliffe, he broke his ankle. And if you don't know what whiteout is, whiteout if you imagine yourself being sat inside a ping pong ball where you have no depth of field or sweet rock or um, they went over, they, in white out, they were walking 
and they went over the edge of a cliff um, down onto the sea ice. They were lucky. That's a balmy Scotsman, is that? I'll tell you who that is. That's the chief engineer. That's when I was I did third engineer for a season on the John Bisco, the Royal Research Ship John Bisco. How did that compare to being on the base? Uh, a lot more money. So what year is this? Uh, 75. Uh, sem yeah, 75 this. So you're, you're an old hand. Yeah, yeah. I, went, I first went in 66. This is it, yeah. This was the last trip I did. Have you been back since? No. Would you go back? I've been two mines. Um, I keep promise, I keep threatening to take my missus down there, but she'd never survive it. On board the Bisco one year, we came up on a storm um, and the old man said, right, that's it, slow ahead. So we had both hooks out and we got pushed back 11 kilometers. We were on egg sandwiches, cheese and egg sandwiches for two days. That's all the galley could put up. We were rolling 28 degrees on the plates and we were eight foot below the waterline. We were rolling 28 degrees. I think there were 46, 47 degrees on the bridge. Slapping on was killed. Yeah, well, everybody was just tied down basically. They just got told, you know, get in a corner and stay there. It was bad, it was. It was just one of them things. There's a twin otter coming into land at Adelaide Island. Down the peninsula, there was like Adelaide Island, Stonington Island, and the new base that was set up there. Every year they used to fly uh, geologists and surveyors and that in. They used to come in by ship and get dropped up at the bases, then the aircraft used to take them out to these places and they'd be set up in camps mm. and the aircraft would move them around and vice versa. So what are you on a plane for? Uh, just as a jolly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes if you don't get off base, you go barmy, stir crazy, like, you know. So all of a sudden, you know, somewhat like this will come up. They need somebody to help them unload. So. Oh, upside down. That's uh, Fossil Bluff, as I said before. It was a summer base, just home for summer, where the glaciologists and geologists and all that used to make it as their main camp and then go off. What was the big takeaway you got out of it? It was an experience that I'll never forget. Um, well, I've, I've, I've travelled the world as a mechanic and nobody's ever refused me a job. I've worked in Saudi Arabia, uh, South Africa, um, Australia, England. I mean, you're on your own. There's nobody else. I mean, I had a good group of people with me. I had a bloke who was, who's still alive today, he's 94, uh, who was there when I first went down. And I, I'm, his name, we, he, he was named Dad then, because he was the oldest one on, in our place. And um, it stuck throughout, you know. And he's visited, he's visited me here in Australia a couple of times. Yeah, we created a hell of a bond, yeah, yeah, yeah.